Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and today Apple released iOS 11.3. We've been waiting for this for quite some time, thought it would come out earlier than this, but it came out today and it's available for everyone to download from an iPhone 5S and newer. Now, if you're coming from a previous public version, 11.2.6, for example, it came in for me on an 8 Plus at 787.4 megabytes, but on the iPhone 10 where I had the beta, it came in at a much larger 2.0. 1, 8 gigabytes. So depending on which version you're coming from, it could be around that size, uh, smaller or larger. Let's take a look at the build number. The build number is 15E216. And this build can includes quite a few changes. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the iPhone battery health. This is very significant for those of you with older devices that have degraded batteries. And you can check that in your settings go to settings, go to battery, and then under battery, you have battery health. And depending on which, which version of phone you have, this is going to vary. You can see here, it says maximum capacity, 100%. I'm at peak performance capability. Now, if you're below 80%, you'll have the option to turn off performance, or really it keeps the performance up, but you can turn that down and have it throttle your phone until you replace the battery so that it doesn't crash on its own. So that's one of those features that's included with this version. Now, one of the things they've done for iPad is actually do something called iPad charge management. And this one does not have the battery health, even though it's on 11.3. So if you go to battery, you'll see you don't have the battery health, but what they've done is for iPads that are plugged in all the time, for example, it will maintain battery health when it's connected to power for prolonged periods of time. So maybe you have this in a kiosk or a point of sale system, something like that. It will maintain the battery. So it will allow it to drop down and then let it charge up once in a while so that the battery doesn't degrade as quickly. Now, the next thing they've done that you can't see really initially anyway, is augmented reality. They offered AR kit 1.5 to developers and it allows developers to place digital objects on vertical surfaces like walls and things like that. So if you're using the camera with AR, what you can do is do things on vertical surfaces, have it recognize things on vertical surfaces. And it also supports a higher resolution through this camera. So when you're using it for AR, you'll see it more real world or reality as opposed to looking through a digital camera. Now, the next thing they've done on the iPhone 10 specifically is an emoji. So they've added four of them. Let's take a look. Now, as you can see here, here's the old ones. This bottom row is all the new ones. So you have a lion, and there, it finally sees my face, kind of. You've got the dragon, you've got a skull or skeleton, and you have a bear. So you have all of these new ones as options as well. I don't know how many they'll add over time, but that's one of the newer options. The next thing they've done is privacy. Privacy is a pretty big update. And what I mean by that is privacy on different apps, maybe the iTunes store, for example. The first time you open it, it will give you this little privacy icon and it lets you know how your how your data is being managed so if you go in here you can read all about how data is being managed they tell you exactly what's going on to let you know how apple stores or doesn't store or uses your data in general they don't tend to send sell your data but they do use it anonymously to do different things one of the changes they've also made in the app store is when you're looking at reviews. So maybe you're in an app, maybe you want to download one. Let's see if we can find a game here. We can take a look at the reviews and we can sort the reviews. This one doesn't have enough. Let's try this one. So in the reviews here, you can actually sort the reviews so that you can get the information you're looking for. So sort by most helpful, most favorable, most critical, most recent. So maybe you want to see the most recent reviews. You can now sort based on those reviews that's been added. They've also improved the updates tab. So with different information and file size, so the file size availabilities and things can be different and it will let you know what they are and gives you an idea of how much data you use up. So it gives a little more information than it did before. Now, if you're using Apple news, Apple news will give you a little bit more information as well. We'll go in here and what it's supposed to do is bring top stories always appear first. So whatever the top stories are, depending on what you're following or whatever's there, uh, will appear first in the feed always. You can also watch top videos curated by news editors. I don't see a whole lot of these yet. I guess maybe this is one of the videos, uh, but you can watch the videos in there that are curated for you. One of the other things they've changed is within Apple Music. And Apple Music now has a section under it. If you go into, I think it's under Browse, we go to 
music videos. There's a music video section now, and this music video section allows you to see different video experiences, including an updated music video section with a video playlist. So curated video playlists, we can see those. And also you can find friends that have similar tastes using updated suggestions, things like that. So you can see all of these different videos and maybe you want to look at country videos, kids and family, choice classical videos, whatever music you like, there's a bunch of videos if you've got Apple Music. So you'll have that option now as well. Now there's a new feature called Business Chat and I'm not able to see it here, but they show an example of a store that has Business Chat and what that allows you to do is talk directly to that business and maybe you have a question for one of those stores. You can, you can answer those questions. You can even do Apple pay with them and buy a product they suggest. So that's a new addition as well. I haven't seen that in person yet, but I have seen it well through these photos that Apple has as well. Now, if you're using the health app under health and you'll see some health information, of course, but now you have under here health data and then health records. So if you want to use health records, you can, and it says keep track of clinical health records from multiple sources and automatically receive updates. So maybe you wanted to get started on that. You can search different hospitals in your area and get your health records delivered right to your phone. So maybe you want to partner with someone around Asheville, I guess, Mission Health. You can partner with them and they'll authorize information back and forth and you can have view it right in your health. There's a bunch of keyboard updates. It has to do with different languages and support for different hardware. But if you want to use different keyboards, different languages, things like that, there's been some fixes for that and different issues with, for example, there's a fixed issue on the iPad Pro that prevented the iPad smart keyboard from working after connecting to a, a captive Wi-Fi access point. I've actually run into some issues with that iPad keyboard not working properly, and this should fix that issue. There's a bunch of bug fixes in the background that fix speed and stability. Within Safari, they made some changes, and most of them have to do with privacy and maybe auto-filling forms, for example. So when you fill in a form, you actually have to tap and then authenticate where you want it to fill in that information instead of it assuming that you want to fill in that information. That keeps your information more secure. They've done some things to address warnings as far as websites and background privacy. And they've also done a thing with your favorites. They show the icons now instead of just words or assumed icons. There's some other improvements as well for support for AML, which is a standard that provides more accurate location data for emergencies. So maybe you're using the SOS feature. You push this five times. That will give them more information as far as your location is concerned in case you can't get to your phone. There's a bunch of little things also, such as podcasts now play episodes with a single tap instead of tapping a couple other things. There's issues that are resolved all over the place with things from face ID to mail to the lock screen, all sorts of fixes that are all over within the OS. And maybe some they didn't even tell us about with as far as security and things like that. So all of these things have been updated and fixed and hopefully we'll see some updates as well. We know 11.4 is coming and that has to do with some new features with the new iPad and, and class kit and things like that for students and teachers. We're waiting for that. I expect that maybe this coming week and then we'll see iOS 12 in June. Now I did run a geek bench on this just to see how it go, how it went. So let's go ahead and go into that. We'll go to history CPU. And this is what I got today, 4,239 and 10,019 for multi-core. If we look at the previous history, it's pretty close depending on which score you're looking at. These are all of the different betas. So we're right on the same speed for the most part, and it feels fast and fluid. Now, battery life is going to take a few days to know for sure. So don't expect great battery life the first time you use this. Give it a couple days, and then we'll see how it goes after that. That's pretty much it everything in here, at least most of the major details, I'll leave a list below or a link to it below. So you can check out all of the tiny little tweaks and fixes that are in this OS update. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll leave it in the description as well. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like, as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.